This is Ujjwal Kashyap and I welcome you at I Desire UPSC. Hello everyone, today we are going to start the 11th chapter of our book India's Struggle for Independence by Bipin Chandra. The Split of Congress and the Rise of Revolutionary Terrorism The Indian National Congress split in December 1907. Almost at the same time, revolutionary terrorism made its appearance in Bengal. The two events were not unconnected. By 1907, the moderate nationalists had exhausted their historical role. Their achievements, as we have seen in the previous chapter, were immense. considering the low level of political consciousness and the immense difficulties they had to face when they began their failures too were numerous they lacked faith in common people did not work among them and consequently failed to acquire any roots among them even their propaganda did not reach them nor did they organize any all india campaigns and when during 1905 to 7 such an all india campaign did come up in the form of the swadeshi and boycott movement they were not its leaders though the bengal moderates did play an active role in their own province their politics were based on the belief that they would be able to persuade the rulers to introduce economic and political reforms but their political achievements in this respect were meagre instead of respecting them for their moderation the british treated them with contempt sneered at their politics and met popular agitation with repression the meaning of sneered is smile or speak in a contemptuous or mocking manner this basic failure however was that of not keeping pace with events they could not see that their own achievements had made their politics obsolete they failed to meet the demands of the new stage of the national movement visible proof of this was their failure to attract the younger generation the british had been suspicious of the national congress from its inception but they had not been overtly hostile in the first few years of its existence because they believed its activities would remain academic and a handful of intellectuals however as soon as it became apparent that the congress would not remain so narrowly confined and that it was becoming a focus of indian nationalism the officials turned openly critical of the congress the nationalist leader and the press they now began to brand the nationalists as disloyal babus sadists brahmins and violent villains the congress was described as a factory of sedition and congressmen as disappointed candidate for office and discontented lawyers who represent no one but themselves in 1888 dufrin the viceroy attacked the national congress in a public speech and ridiculed it as representing only the elite a microscopic minority George Hamilton secretary of state for India accused the congress leader of possessing seditious and 
double sided character this hostility did not abate when the moderates who then controlled the congress began to distance themselves from the rising militant nationalist tendencies of the certain section of the congress which became apparent when the government unleashed a repressive policy against the indian press in 1897 in street the british appeared even more eager to attack and finish the congress why was this so first because however moderate and loyal in their political perception the moderate were they were still nationalists and propagators of anti colonialist politics and ideas as garson the viceroy put it in 1905 gokley either does not see where he is going or if he does see it then he is dishonest in his pretensions the meaning of pretension is a claim or assertion of a claim to something you cannot awaken and appeal to the spirit of nationality in india and at the same time profess loyal acceptance of british rule or as george hamilton the secretary of state had complained to dada bhai norozi in 1900 you announce yourself as a sincere supporter of british rule you vehemently denounce the conditions and consequences which are inseparable from the maintenance of that rule second the british policy makers felt the moderate led congress could be easily finished because it was weak and without a popular base karzan in particular supported by george hamilton pursued this policy he declared in 1900 the congress is tottering to its fail and one of my greatest ambitions while in india is to assist it to a peaceful demise in 1903 he wrote to the madras governor my policy ever since i came to india has been to reduce the congress to impotence in 1904 he had insulted the congress by refusing to meet its delegation headed by its president the policy was changed once the powerful swadeshi and boycott movement began and the militant nationalist trend became strong an alternative policy of weakening the nationalist movement was now to be followed in a street of sneering at the moderates the policy was to be that of rallying them as john morley the new secretary of state for india put it in 1907 the meaning of sneering is contemptuous or mocking the new policy known as the policy of the carrot and the stick was to be a three pronged one it may be described as the policy of repression conciliation suppression the extremists as we shall refer to the militant nationalists from now on were to be repressed though mildly in the first stage the purpose being to frighten the moderates the moderates were then to be placated through some concessions and promises and hints were to be given that further concessions would be forthcoming if they disassociate themselves from the extremists the entire objective of the new policy was to isolate the extremists once the moderates fell into the trap the extremists could be suppressed through the use of full might of the state the moderates in turn could then be ignored unfortunately for the national movement neither the moderates nor the extremists 
were able to understand the official strategy and consequently suffered a number of reverses. The government of India headed by Lord Minto as Viceroy and John Morley as the Secretary of State offered a bait of fresh reforms in the Legislative Council and in the beginning of 1906 began discussing them with the moderate leadership of the Congress. The meaning of bait is food placed on a hook or in a net, trap or fishing area to entice fish or other animals as prey. The moderates agreed to cooperate with the government and discuss reforms even while a vigorous popular movement which the government was trying to suppress was going on in the country. The result was a total split in the nationalist ranks. Before we take up this split at some length, it is of some interest to note that the British were to follow this tactics of dividing the moderates from the militants in latter years also. For example, in 1924, vis a vis Swarajists, in 1936, vis a vis Nehru and the leftists, and so on. The difference was that in the latter years, the national leadership had learned a lesson from the events of 1907 to 1909 and refused to rise to the bat, remaining united despite deep differences. There was a great deal of public debate and disagreement among moderates and extremists in the years 1905 to 1907, even when they were working together against the partitioning of Bengal. The extremists wanted to extend the Swadeshi and the boycott movement from Bengal to the rest of the country. They also wanted to gradually extend the boycott from foreign goods to every form of association or cooperation with the colonial government. The moderates wanted to confine the boycott part of the movement to Bengal and were totally opposed to its extension to the government. Matters nearly came to a head at the Calcutta Congress in 1906 over the question of presidentship. A split was avoided by choosing Dada Bhai Norozi, who was respected by all the nationalists as a great patriot. Four compromise resolution on the Swadeshi boycott, national education and self-government demands were passed. Throughout 1907, the two sides fought over differing interpretations of the four resolutions. By the end of 1907, they were looking upon each other as the main political enemy. The extremists were convinced that the battle for freedom had begun as the people had been roused. They felt it was time for the big push and in their view the moderates were big drag on the movement. Most of them led by Aurobindo Ghosh felt that the time had come to part company with the moderates, pushed them out of the leadership of the Congress and split the organization if the moderates could not be deposed. Most of the moderates led by Firoz Shah Mehta were no less determined on a split. To remain with the extremists was, they felt, to enter dangerous waters. They were afraid that the Congress organization built carefully over the last 20 years would be shattered. The government was bound to suppress any large-scale anti-imperialist movement. Why invite premature repression? As Gokhale put it in 1907, you, the extremists, do not realize the enormous reserve of power behind the government. 
if the Congress were to do anything such as you suggest, the government would have no difficulty in throttling it in five minutes. Minto and Morley were holding up hopes of brighter prospects. Many moderates thought that their dream of Indians sharing political and administrative power was going to come true. Any hasty action by the Congress under extremist pressure could annoy the Liberals in power in Britain. Why not get rid of extremists while there was still time? As H. A. Wadia, representing Firoz Shah Mehta's thinking, wrote in an article in which, after referring to the extremists as the worst enemies of our cows, said, the union of these men with the Congress is the union of a diseased limb to a healthy body and the only remedy is surgical severance. If the Congress is to be saved from the death by blood poisoning, both sides had it wrong from the nationalist point of view as well as their own factional point of view. The moderates did not see that the colonial state was negotiating with them not because of their inherent political strength but because of the fear of extremists. The extremists did not see that the moderates were their natural outer defense line in terms of civil liberties and so on and that they did not possess the required strength to face the colonial states juggernaut. Neither saw that in a vast country like India ruled by a powerful imperialist nation only a broad based united movement had any chance of success. It wasn't as though the whole leadership was bind to danger. The main public leaders of the two wings, Tilak of the extremists and Gokhale of the moderates, were mature politicians who had a clear grasp of the dangers of disunity in the nationalist ranks. Tilak did not want the united national front to break. He was clearly that a powerful movement would not be built up. At that stage, nor out political demands successfully pressed on the rulers without the unity of different political trends. His tactics were to organize massive support for his political line and thus force a favorable compromise on the moderates. But having roused his followers in Maharashtra and pushed on by the more extreme elements of Bengal, Tilak found that he could not afford to dismount from the tiger he found himself riding. When it came to the crunch, he had to go with the more extreme leaders like Arvindo Ghosh. Gokhale too saw the dangers of a split in nationalist ranks and tried to avoid it. Already in October 1907, he had written to a friend, If a split does come, it means a disaster, for the bureaucracy will then put down both sections without much difficulty. But he did not have the personality to stand up to a willful autocrat like Firoz Shah Mehta. He too knuckled under pressure of his own extremists. The conversation was held on 26 December 1907 at Surat on the banks of the river Tapti. The extremists were excited by the rumors that the moderates wanted to scuttle the four Calcutta resolutions. The meaning of scuttle is a metal container with a handle used to fetch and store coal for a domestic fire, the part of a car's body work between the wind screens and the bonnet.
the moderates were deeply hurt by the ridicule and venom poured on them in mass meetings held at surat on the previous 3 days the delegates thus met in an atmosphere surcharged with excitement and anger the extremists wanted a guarantee that the four resolutions would be passed to force the moderates to do so they decided to object to the duly elected president for the year ras bihari ghosh both sided came to the session prepared for a confrontation in no time the 1600 delegates were shouting coming to blows and hurling cheers at each other in the meantime some unknown person hurled a sou at the dais which hit feroz sah mehta and surendranath banerji the police came and cleared the hall the congress session was over the only victorious party was the rulers minto immediately wrote to morley that the congress collapse at surat was a great trip for us tilak had seen the coming danger and made last minute efforts to avoid it but he was helpless before his followers lajpat rai a participant in the events from the extremist side wrote letter in a steed of leading his party he tilak allowed himself to be led by some of its wild spirits twice on my request at surat he agreed to waive his opposition to the election of dr ras bihari ghos and leave the matter of the four calcutta resolutions to the subject committee but the moment i left him he found himself helpless before the volume of opinions that surrounded him the suddenness of the surat fiasco took tilak by surprise he had not bargained for it because as arbindo ghosh wrote later tilak viewed the split as a catastrophe he valued the congress as a great national fact and its unrealized possibilities he now tried to undo the damage he sent a virtual letter of regret to his opponents accepted ras bihari ghosh as the president of congress and offered his cooperation in working for congress unity but feroz sah mehta and his colleagues would not relent the meaning of relent is abandon or mitigate a severe or harsh attitude they thought they were on a sure wicket the government immediately launched a massive attack on the extremists extremist newspapers were suppressed tilak their main leader was sent to mandalay jail for 6 years arbindo ghosh their idolog was involved in a revolutionary conspiracy case and immediately after being judged innocent gave up politics and escaped to pondicherry to take up religion bc paul temporarily retired from politics and lajpat roy who had been a helpless onlooker at surat left for britain in 1908 to come back in 1909 and then to go off to the united states for an extended stay the extremists were not able to organize an effective alternative party or to sustain the movement the government had own at least for the moment the moderates were indulging their own foolish beliefs they gave up all the radical measures adopted at the banaras and calcutta sessions of the congress spurned all over tunes for unity from the extremist and excluded them from the party the meaning of spurned is reject with disdain or contempt they thought they were going to rebuild to court feroz sah mehta a resuscitated renovated reincarnated congress 
the meaning of resuscitate is revive from unconsciousness or apparent death the meaning of reincarnate is having been reborn in another body but the spirit had gone out of the congress and all efforts to restore it failed they had lost the respect and support of the political indians especially the youth and were reduced to a small coterie most of the moderate leaders withdrew into their cells only gokhale plodded on with the aid of a small band of co-workers from the servants of indian society and the vast majority of politically conscious indians extended their support however passive to lok kiman tilak and the militant nationalists after 1908 the national movement as a whole declined in 1909 orbindo ghosh noted the change when i went to jail the whole country was alive with the cry of bande matram alive with the hope of a nation the hope of millions of men who had newly risen out of degradation when i came out of jail i listened for that cry but there was in a steed a silence a hush had fallen on the country the meaning of hush is make be quiet or stop talking but while the absurd was gone the aroused nationalist sentiments did not disappear the people waited for the next phase in 1914 tilak was released and he picked up the threads of the movement the moderates and the country as a whole were disappointed by the constitutional reforms of 1909 The Indian Council Act of 1909 increased the number of elected members in the Imperial Legislative Council and the Provincial Legislative Councils. Most of the elected members were still elected indirectly. An Indian was to be appointed a member of the Governor General's Executive Council. Of the 68 members of the Imperial Legislative Council, 36 were officials and 5 were nominated non-officials. Out of 27 elected members, 6 were elected by big landlords and 2 by British capitalists. The Act permitted members to introduce resolutions. It also increased their power to ask questions. Voting on separate budget items was allowed, but the reformed councils still enjoyed no real power and remained mere advisory bodies. They also did not introduce an element of democracy or self-government. The undemocratic, foreign, and exploitative character of British rule remained unchanged. Morley openly declared in parliament if it could be said that this chapter of reforms led directly or necessarily up to the establishment of a parliamentary system in India i for one would have nothing at all to do with it the real purpose of the morley minto reforms was to divide the nationalist ranks and to check the growing unity among indians by increasing the growth of muslim communalism to achieve the latter objective the reforms introduced the system of separate electorates under which muslims could only vote for muslim candidates in constituencies especially reserved for them this was done to encourage the notion that the political economic and cultural interests of hindus and muslims were separate and not common the institution of separate electorates was one of the poisonous 
trees which was to yield a bitter harvest in later years. The end of 1907 brought another political trend to the fore. The meaning of fore is situated or placed in front. The impatient young men of Bengal took to the path of individual heroism and revolutionary terrorism, a term we use without any pejorative meaning and for want of a different term. This was primarily because they could find no other way of expressing their patriotism. It is necessary at this point to reiterate the fact that while the youth of Bengal might have been incensed at the official arrogance and repression and the medicancy of the Congress moderates, they were also led to the politics of the bomb by the extremists failure to give a positive lead to the people. The extremists had made a sharp and on the whole correct and effective critic of the moderates. They had rightly emphasized the role of the masses and the need to go beyond propaganda and agitation. They had advocated persistent opposition to the government and put forward a militant program of passive resistance and boycott of foreign clothes, foreigners, courts, education and so on. They had demanded self-sacrifice from the youth. They had talked and written about direct action. But they had failed to find forms through which all these ideas could find practical expression. They could neither create a viable organization to lead the movement nor could they really define the movement in a way that differed from that of the moderates. They were more militant. Their critic of British rule was couched in stronger language. They were willing to make greater sacrifices and undergo greater sufferings, but they did not know how to go beyond more vigorous agitation. They were not able to put before people new forms of political struggle or mass movements. Consequently, they too had come to a political dead end by the end of 1907. Perhaps that is one reason why they expended so much of their energy in criticizing the moderates and capturing the Congress. Unsurprisingly, the extremists Waffling failed to impress the youth who decided to take recourse to physical force. The meaning of waffle Speak or write at length in a vague or trivial manner. The Yugantar, a newspaper echoing this feeling of disaffection, wrote in April 1906. After the police assault on the peaceful Barisal conference, the 30 crore of people inhabiting India must raise their 60 crores of hands to stop this curse of operation. Force must be stopped by force. But the question was, what form would this movement based on force take? Organizing a popular mass uprising would necessarily be an uphill and prolonged task. Many thought of trying to subvert the loyalty of the army, but they knew it would not be easy. However, these two objectives were kept as long-term goals and for the present revolutionary youth decided to copy the methods of the Irish nationalists and Russian nihilists and populists, that is to say they decided to organize the assassination of unpopular British officials. Such assassinations would strike terror into the hearts of the rulers. 
arouse the patriotic instincts of the people inspire them and remove the fear of authority from their minds each assassination and if the assassins were caught the consequent trial of the revolutionaries involved would act as propaganda by deed all that this form of a struggle needed was numbers of young people ready to sacrifice their lives inevitably it appealed to the idealism of the youth it aroused their latent sense of heroism a steadily increasing number of young men turned to this form of political struggle here again the extremist leadership let the young people down while it praised their sense of self sacrifice and courage it failed to provide a positive outlet for their revolutionary energies and to educate them on the political differences between a revolution based on the activity of the masses and a revolutionary feeling based on individual action however heroic it also failed to oppose the notion that to be a revolutionary meant to be a believer in violent action in fact orbindo ghosh encouraged this notion perhaps the actions of the extremist leadership were constrained by the feelings that it was not proper to politically criticize the heroic youth who were being condemned and hunted by the authorities but this failure to politically and ideologically oppose young revolutionaries proved a grievous error for it enabled the individualistic and terrorist conception of revolution to take root in bengal in 1904 vd savarkar organized abhinav bharat as a secret society of the revolutionaries after 1905 several newspapers openly and a few leaders secretly began to advocate revolutionary terrorism in 1907 an unsuccessful attempt was made on the life of the lieutenant governor of bengal in april 1908 praful chaki and khudiram bose threw a bomb at the carriage which they believed was occupied by king's ford the unpopular judge of muzaffarpur unfortunately they killed two english ladies in stead praful chaki shot himself dead while khudiram bose was tried and hanged thousands wept at his death and he and chaki entered the ranks of popular nationalist heroes about whom folk songs were composed and sung all over the country the era of revolutionary terrorism had begun very soon secret societies of revolutionaries came up all over the country the most famous and long lasting being anushilan samiti and jugantar their activities took two forms the assassination of oppressive officials and informers and traitors from their own ranks and dakatis to raise fund for purchase of arms etc the latter came to be popularly known as swadeshi dakatis two of the most spectacular revolutionary terrorist actions of the period were the unsuccessful attempt under the leadership of ras bihari bose and sachin sanyal to kill the viceroy lord hardinge who was wounded by the bomb thrown at him while he was riding an elephant in a state procession and the assassination of karzan veli in london by madan lal dhingra in all 186 revolutionaries were killed or convicted between the years 1908 to 1918 the revolutionary terrorists also established centers abroad the more famous of them were syam ji krishna verma vd savarkar and hardyal in london and madam kama and ajit singh in europe 
revolutionary terrorism gradually petered out, lacking a mass base despite remarkable heroism. The individual revolutionaries organized in small secret groups could not withstand suppression by the still strong colonial state. But despite their small numbers and eventual failure, they made a valuable contribution to the growth of the nationalism in India. As a historian has put it, they gave us back the pride of our manhood. If you want to support us in our efforts, kindly subscribe to our channel, like it and share it so that others too get its benefit. Happy learning. Thank you. Jai Hind. Jai Bharat.